Greetings, my fellow Freedom Low Sovereign Thinkers. Thank you for tuning in to the LO3 Podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful Swampy Mangroves of South Florida. And today's date, Thursday, June 25th, 2020. Yeah, so I'm just uh, nice and warm out here in Fort Lauderdale. Whew, yep. And um, I'm in my camper right now. Let the breeze kick in. So I want to keep this one pretty simple. I'm going to be talking about a report came from the governmentrag.com. Give some support to educational alternative news. And um, this one's entitled, Was Walmart Compromised into Corona Hoax After Evidence of Their Opioid Pill Mill Drug Ring? So, we're just going to see what you got here. And always give them a little love, of course. Let's see what we got. Hold on. Do you want to do some donations and all that? Yeah. Got a cool little shirt for sale, by the way. It says, I plan to survive the coronavirus by doing the exact opposite of whatever Bill Gates is recommending. <laughs> Exclusive TGR report they call it. They do they do they do they, they do need donations. Coming in August for only five dollars a month donation. TGR will be releasing an exclusive newsletter to subscribers only. Get the intel before they shut down the internet and censoring everything regarding the truth. You can have a printed copy mail or email to you directly. Directly to you. So, um, yeah, give them some support, folks. All right? Like, even uh, when I do narrate these reports on my all my episodes, it's mainly on fair use to get what, they, um, what they're what they doing. Try, so one thing I always try to do is um, share information, other sides, educate at the same time. So, um, they have another shirt here. Just go ahead, any fuck bitches, come to my neighborhood. Have a girl with a gun. And it says here, was Walmart compromised into Corona hoax after evidence of their opioid pill mill drug ring? And it's interesting here, and the person wrote is Stephanie Sledge. It came out yesterday. It says here, the prosecutor's office in the Eastern District of Texas has always been known for their special investigative skills of uncovering major drug lords. In fact, they have been one of the leading U.S. attorney offices in the nation to carry out President Trump's initiative to stop opioid abuse. Focusing their resources on the illegal prescribing and dispensing opioid drugs by pharmacies and doctors. Their strategies focused on cracking down on the domestic and international drug supply chain. Interesting there because I think that's, if I'm correct, that's one of, one of uh, Trump's executive orders too. Hey, if Texas is doing the job, you got to give Trump credit for that, too, for taking the initiative on getting having these guys getting involved. In 2018, Joe Brown, U.S. Attorney for EDTX, set an example of outstanding investigative work when they ex- extra, oh, extra, extradited defendants out of Columbia for major drug-related crimes. In 2019, Brown's office ranked fourth in the nation in the number of experience and sophisticated indicted organized crime case pursuant to the Justice Department's Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force program. This was until they began investigating the shady opioid practices of Walmart. After a two-year investigation in the fall of 2018, federal prosecutors were prepared to present highly damaged evidence in Walmart's opioid dispensing practices and their deep development in being an opioid pill mill pipeline. However, Trump's top appointees at the DOJ instantly suppressed the evidence and killed the case. Leaving Walmart to play the victim role and get away with continuing their dirty pipeline between their pharmacies and the nation's drug-dealing, pill-mill, murdering doctors. But why would they want to suppress the discovery of Walmart as one of the major players in the legal dispensing of the opioid drug by their pharmacies across the nation? After all... The exponential increase, the exp, exp, exponential, exponential, yeah, 
increase in opioid overdoses in the nation was the major reason for Trump's opioid initiative. It was discovered between 2014 and 2017 that over 1.3 million doses were illegally dispensed by Walmart's pharmacies from one pill mill doctor alone. After a two-year investigation, the prosecuting team led by Joe Brown and Heather Rattan, was who focused her career in, per, in prosecuting members of the drug cartel, went to Washington, D.C. to try to save their case. First, they want the DEA's headquarters and met with acting administrator Antum Dillon and laid out their evidence against Walmart and the murders of many overdose customers in Texas as a result. They presented evidence and explained they began getting pleas for help from Walmart pharmacists who were highly concerned about having to participate in filling RXs from or prescriptions from no national pill mill doctors. These pharmacists also pleaded for guidance from Walmart's corporate office and tried to reach out to others. They did not want to dispense these opioids knowing there was illegal dealing going on as well as putting customers at risk. These cries for help began surfacing from all over the nation. Investigators obtained records showing there were pharmacists from Maine, North Carolina, Kansas, Washington, and other states that were being forced to be part of the Walmart opioid pipeline of illegal dispensing, meanwhile received no help from their own Walmart employer. According to ProPublica, one Walmart employee warned about a Florida doctor who had a list of patients from Kentucky that had been visiting that had been visiting pharmacies from all over all of central Wisconsin recently that doctors sent patients to Walmarts in more than 30 states. Walmart did not take action to stop the flow of illegal dispensing of op- opioids. In response to these alarms, Walmart compliance Officials did not take corporate-wide action to halt the flow of opioids. Instead, they repeatedly admonished pharmacists that they could not cut off any doctor entirely. They could evaluate each prescription on an individual basis. They, and they went further. An opioid compliance manager told an executive in an email gathered gather during the inquiry and viewed by ProPublica that Walmart's focus should be on driving sales. After they finished their presentation, Dylan sat back in his chair and exclaimed, Jesus Christ, according to five people familiar with the investigation, why aren't we talking about this as a criminal case? Seven months earlier, Prosecutor Rotan sent an official notification that she intended to indict the corporation for violating the Controlled Substance Act. With support from Brown, they moved forward on their investigation, gathering evidence that would justify the next step of accountability. However, they faced a major obstacle of Walmart being a 500, Fortune 500 company who employs over 2 million people in deals and over $500 billion in annual revenue. But before the Texas office could file their case, the DOJ intervened and was ordered to stand down. Trump officials informed Walmart that the DOJ will not prosecute the company on August 31st, 2018. Okay, A.G. Barr, can you explain this shit? This can be collaborated, according to this letter, from Walmart's lawyer that lays out the timeline. And there's a... You can look for the letter yourself. That lays out the timeline of the case. Still, the Texas prosecutors continue to to try and find other avenues to move the case forward. Surprisingly, seven years earlier, Walmart had agreed to a settlement with the DEA in which it had promised to improve and correct its dispensing practices and control over the abuse of opioid pill mill prescriptions. This is an obvious indication that Walmart had already been investigated previously in regards to allowing the opioid pipeline practices. Now, with DEA's Dylan LeBroad aboard, they presented their evidence to the DOJ with the hope that then-Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein 
will come aboard the investigation. They explained the same evidence that added that Walmart was a PETA offender under the Controlled Substance Act. Ratan or Ratan explained, dispensing opioids without le- legitimate medical purpose is legally akin to dealing with dealing heroin. Criminal law says if a person or entity is willfully blind or deliberately ignorant, they are as liable as they had act intentionally. Once Walmart's, head, Walmart's headquarters knew, its pharmacists were raising alarms about suspicious prescriptions, but the compliance department continued to allow even push to fill them. Well, that made the company guilty. The Texas prosecutors contended this was not a question for a few rogue employees, Ratton explained. Walmart had a national problem. Worse, the prosecutors contended the company was a repeated repeat offender. Ain't that nice? Oh, yeah. People still shop at those effing outhouses. This evidence justifies a path to criminal prosecution. Brown explained to Rosenstein, we have to act, and DEA's Dillon added that a fine will not be sufficient deterrent since Walmart has more money than it knows what to do with it. Rothstein, Rosenstein responded, not that there is anything wrong with that. We are a capital, we all capitalists here. All capitalists. I'm, I'm sorry there, Council Rosenstein. Technically, they're not an open free market. They're a corporatist. Government gives them handouts and so forth to get their way. All right? I'll continue on here. Prosecuting team then claimed they weren't pursuing Walmart because it was profitable, but because, in their view, the company had put its customers at deadly risk. Rosenstein left. Rosenstein left the room, and I. Okay, one moment. Looks like I hit the wrong button. Rosie had left the room and hoped to revive the criminal um, case against Walmart had failed. After after the failed attempt to get Rosenstein aboard to support prosecuting the Walmart Pill Mill Corporation, they began focusing their investigation towards prosecuting individual employees, including mid-level manager. However, Trump officials have blocked that outlet as well. The Trump officials blocked every angle of holding Walmart accountable for allowing pill mill drug dealing to take place nationwide. The Trump appointees at the DOJ continue to side with Walmart. Alright, so... Interesting there, right? Following attempts... The attempts by the Texas office to hold Walmart accountable for the deaths of many people across the nation. They instead play the victim card, even though Walmart never fully cooperated. Walmart lawyers went to Washington and complained about the Texas, the Texas prosecutors accusing them from seeking to embarrass a company while using the threat of criminal charges to extort a larger civil fine. Criminal and civil investigations can run in parallel, but it's an ethical violation for prosecutors to use threat of criminal penalties to generate a higher civil settlement. U.S. Attorney Brown offered up a response by saying, Drug enforcement agency investigations of multiple opioid overdose deaths in the Eastern District of Texas resulted in our office opening parallel civil and criminal investigations of Walmart's pharmacy practices. These investigations have been handled appropriately and according to the Department of Justice policy. So, um, okay, so we just... Go on here. Walmart choose, chooses now to attack the investigators and try to try and true method to avoid oversight. We are confident that once and for all of the facts in this matter are public and the hollowness, hollowness of this criticism will be apparent. It is not the goal of for office our office to embarrass Walmart. Walmart's behavior in dispensing opioid medication in the middle of a public health crisis should embarrass Walmart. Walmart's ability to go over 
the head of the Texas office left the U.S. attorney's team shocked and frustrated and led civil and the lead civil prosecutor Joshua Russ on the case resigned in protest on October 25th, 2019 in his resignation letter of which a copy with Walmart's name blacked out can be found here and here. Yeah, you can check it out yourselves, folks. He stated, Corporations cannot poison Americans with impunity. Good sense dictates stern and swift action when American die. Americans die. This was covered up when Trump announced the COVID coronavirus, public-private partnerships, and combating the coronavirus. But in reality, look who gets to make billions of the corona hoax. Trump continues to tell the public they are full scale ahead in confronting the nation's opioid crisis, even though his own DOJ refused to hold Walmart accountable for their involvement in drug pill mill dispensing, resulting in nationwide deaths. Trump says a key element was a public private partnership with several companies, including Walmart to implement measures such as the Opioid Addiction Education Initiative. Together, we are going to end the scourge of drug addiction in America. Really? Then suddenly, American watch as Walmart CEO Doug McMillan appeared in the White House Rose Garden to pledge the company's help in combating the coronavirus. The same company were previous Vice Chairman Tom Coughlin was successfully prosecuted for a major high-rolling embezzlement scheme. Shockingly, other companies, including CVS, Walgreens, and Target, were also mentioned in the investigation as being opioid pill mill dispensaries for the same drug-dealing doctors. Just how much they have made on these illegal prescriptions, and why did the Trump administration chose these very same corporations to be the leading public-private partnership companies to be in charge of the alleged coronavirus pandemic. Yeah, explain that to me. Okay, even Dumb Dumb and Debbie Watchman Schultz explain that. You go, oh, I'm glad they got rid of tobacco, but the opioid thing's okay. <laughs> I'll keep on here. Then on May 26, 2020, following the coronavirus public-private relationship announcement, the Eastern Texas, Eastern District of Texas Attorney General Joel Brown submitted his resignation. Knowing the EDX, EDTX Attorneys General has an abundance of amount of evidence to prosecute Walmart Corporation for being a leader in allowing opioid drug dealing to take place under their command through illegal pill dispensing. Trump instead brought them abroad, aboard, to be part of the coronavirus takedown of America. Were they compromised? Did they take a secret deal? What is the trade-off? Was Walmart told they will participate in the corona hoax, or will they be prosecuted? And if they play along, then all evidence disappears. It is this, it is this why Walgreens, CVS, Target... Were also brought into this corona hoax. Why was it? Because they were, they too were compromised. You can witness yourself the happy display of Trump welcoming opioid dealing Walmart CEO Doug McMillan, Millon, into the coronavirus hoax to make billions off the scam. There's a video on that. That Trump's announced Walmart's role in the coronavirus. And you can read it. You can see it for yourselves. Yeah. More things change. The more it stays the same. Another thing for Big Pharma. God bless Big Pharma. Right? There you go. And they all say, I will support Walmart 110%. Because Trump endorsed supports them. That's why. So this is why you always got to look at the bigger picture, my friends. You got all a bunch of the swamp creatures in the Trump administration as well. See, the whole thing is I'm not here for drama. And if if, if Trump farts, I'm going to go up in arms. I'm going to get this put out information, get people to think. You don't follow the hype. There's no lords and saviors when it comes to politics, including the president. 
just to let you folks know, I was, I would, um, I did petition no to my senators on William Barr due to his big, big, big brother tyrannical attributes. I did a show on that, other shows on that in the past, like in May. You can look it up for yourselves. So this is why you never trust these sons of bitches, regardless who's in there. Because remember, Big Pharma aren't the Republic's best friend. They're, they're its worst enemy. Doesn't matter what your views are, you better wake the hell up. And you know what? That is it. I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share through social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or if you something that's interesting you want to check out, whatever you do, please send your correspondence from Decorum. I shall leave this link as a footnote on my speaker page. Hit the like button. And if you want to donate, you hit me at paypal.me forward slash Loki Luck number three and support all the other sites if you can as well. Anything I try to share content, fair use, I want to see them people um, give them a token of appreciation also. Alright, once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that demoniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves, keep on spreading the love, and may your guardian spirits be with you.